Today I'm going to show you how to install Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, so I'm on the Raspberry Pi page on the Home Assistant website here. And uh, it says that we can install this on a Raspberry Pi Model B through the latest version, which is currently Pi version 5. Uh, you can't install it on version 3A because there's not enough RAM on it. So if you have a Pi 3B, a Pi 4, a Pi 5, and presumably when they come out with Pi 6, 7, 8, you'll be able to install this as well. But, uh, so as long as you have at least a Pi 3B, you should be okay. Now the Pi, it says here, Pi 3B is okay to get started on, so you may want to upgrade it to a 4 at some point, to get, I guess, to get more memory on it. Uh, so if you go down here, what we're actually going to do is we're going to go to uh, where the Raspberry uh, Pi software is on the Raspberry Pi site. And right here, this is the image loader, the Pi for Pi OS. And uh, I'm installing it on Windows, so I, I download this and install it, but I've already installed it, so, the, or the, uh, the image the imager, I've already installed that. So when I, you start it up, you'll get a program that looks like this or a, a window that looks like this. So we can choose the device over here and then choose the OS. We want to go down here to uh, other specific purpose OS. And we want to go here to where it says home assistant and uh, home automation and down to home assistant. And we already have it for the Raspberry Pi 3 right here. I want to show you another thing real quick. If you don't, if you if you didn't set this for the device, when you go here, it will list all the different devices by the Raspberry Pi. So by selecting the Raspberry Pi you have, it gives you the correct image already. But if you forget to do that, you'll see all of the images for all the different Raspberry Pis. So we'll have three, four, and five. So we're going to select this. So that's the image that we um, uh, want to put it on. And then we're going to choose the storage right here. Now, sometimes this is a bit confusing. It will ask you which one of these things you want to install it on. And uh, one way to find that out if you're confused, it should actually be this USB H drive for me. But I'm going to remove this device, uh, unplug it from the USB. And so this is the adapter I have uh, right here. It looks, it looks like this. And I have the micro SD card and this other adapter to put it in here and everything. So yours might look like this or it might look different. But if you're not sure what one it is, you can pull the adapter out and you see it disappeared. I'm going to plug it back in and you see it reappeared up here. So it's drive a H, but it's actually this, uh, it's this mass storage right here. So we're going to hit next. Yeah, we can go ahead and do that. And anyway, you want to make sure that, that specify the correct device if you have multiple devices plugged into your computer. And so it's going to take uh, a while to write. The, the, the process takes a little while. It takes a while to write it to the card. Uh, and then it's going to take a little while to set up, as you'll see. And so I'll come back once the, uh, the card has been uh, totally loaded. All right, so um, it's finished loading the card, the SD card, the micro SD, uh, and it comes up with this message. So what we've done actually is we've taken a micro SD card and we've used this program to write an image of the operating system on it to make it a bootable SD card for the, um, the Raspberry Pi OS. If, if this is your first time using Raspberry Pi OS or Raspberry Pi, uh, you, you, you might not have done this before, but probably if you've messed with Raspberry Pi, you've already loaded an image of the Raspberry Pi OS uh, on it or, or one of the OSs that you can load on it, which is really just a variation of, of Linux. This particular version uh, is running a Raspberry Pi version of Linux, but it also has on it Docker, which is a, a container program to manage programs. So it's running within a program called Docker. And so if you're familiar with Docker, you'll know what that is, but you really don't need to know what it is for this to run. So it's, it's loaded at all, so it's set up. So instead of you having to set it up using just Raspberry OS, and loading Docker onto it and then loading Raspberry Pi on it. It's done all the work for you. So now all we have to do is remove this SD card from uh, our adapter and then put it into the Raspberry Pi and boot the Raspberry Pi. Um, you can wait a couple of minutes for it to boot up or you can attach it to a, a, a screen uh, and watch it boot up and you'll see, um, you'll see the text of it booting up. So I'm just going to click continue here and remove this from the drive. And you can see right here, um, I'm going to just remove this micro SD card uh, from this adapter that I have here. And I'm going to stick it into the Raspberry Pi. 
So I've stuck it into the bottom of the Raspberry Pi right here. So then I'm going to plug everything into this Raspberry Pi and boot it up next. Uh, after your uh, after your Raspberry Pi boots up, if you have a if you've attached a screen to it, you'll see a screen that kind of looks like this. I'll put a, a picture of it up on on the screen right here. Uh, so it says Home Assistant on it, and uh, it has a picture of the it has a picture of the icon. Basic. Um, so now we need to open up a web browser window and uh, we're going to go to home assistant dot local colon 8123 to connect to this uh, or you can use the IP address of the device or you can use home assistant colon 8123 so we're just going to hit enter there and it's going to say preparing home assistant right here and it says this may take 20 minutes or more and when it says that it really means it uh, so if and it depends, I guess, on what Raspberry Pi version you're running. I'm putting this on a 3B uh, for this demonstration. So this is probably going to be the slowest one, would be my guess. So if you have a 4 or 5, it might be a little faster than this. Uh, so I'm going to wait until whatever the initial screen comes up, and uh, then we'll continue from there. If you want to see what's going on while the process is going on, or see if, if there's a problem or something, what it is, you can actually click on Show Details, and it will show you uh, all the commands it runs and any problems that it had while I was setting it up. Once Home Assistant finishes setting up uh, the server, after about 20 minutes or so, it will come up with this screen, and uh, it will say, Welcome, are you ready to awaken your home, reclaim your privacy, and join a worldwide community? of Tinkerbird, create my smart home. Now what this is going to do is it's going to configure the server specifically uh, to you. Uh, it's going to ask you uh, to create an account uh, and a password. Make sure you remember your password. It's going to also ask you what the location of your home is for certain services that it does and uh, it will set um, that all up. So the next thing that we need to do is click on create uh, my smart home and you're going to want to uh, enter your name and a uh, username and then a password and then we're going to click create account then you're going to want to enter your home address here so uh, that it can uh, use your home address for for various services like weather and, and things that, that will be uh, localized then you're going to enter your country and once you enter your country, uh, the next screen uh, asks you about analytics. So you can, this is so they can improve the program. So uh, you can uh, choose to click these on or leave them off however you wish uh, and uh, then just hit next and then it's going to scan your do an initial scan of your network uh, and uh, it's going to tell you uh, some of the vice devices that you have available on here uh, so uh, for instance Philips Hue lights are here on mine and a few other uh, things and then at this point you can just go finish and now you're into uh, Home Assist. Uh, I will do uh, an another video on how to configure it and how it works uh, because that's a little more involved, but I wanted to do this um, particular um, tutorial to show how to set it up on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you actually have a thing down here called settings and this brings up uh, where you can configure it, where you can build dashboards. If you go to overview, well, we don't have anything up in overview right now. Uh, because we haven't set up any uh, dashboards yet. But you can go in here and you can see there's an overview dashboard, an energy dashboard, a map. And you can create your own dashboards however you want to organize them by functionality or by room. And uh, so that's basically the way you start to organize. Them. But as I said, we'll go over that in another video.